Welcome to Electron Line. Now we have something a little bit more challenging. The masses are no longer aligned on a single straight line and so therefore the forces of gravity will be pointing in different directions. The force between M3 and M1 are to the left and the force between M3 and M2 are along this diagonal here, the hypotenuse of that triangle. Now what we're still trying to do is to, we're still trying to find the total force on M3, the total gravitational force on M3 due to the presence of the other two masses. And the procedure will still be the same. We're going to be finding the magnitude of F13 and the magnitude of F23, but then we're going to have to find the components of each of the forces so we can add the components together because whenever we add vectors, we have to add the X components together and the Y components of each of the vectors. So, let's find the magnitudes first. Let's find F13. That's going to be equal to G, M1, M3, divided by the distance between them squared, and the distance between M1 and M3 is R1 squared. Or I should say R1, and then we square that. So this becomes 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. That would be Newton's meter squared per kilogram squared, but we're going to leave off the units. M1 is uh, 2 times 10 to the 20th, and M3 is 1 times 10 to the 19th, and we divide that by the distance between them, that would be 2 times 10 to the 10th squared. And that's going to be equal to, let's get a calculator, 2 e to the 20th, times 1 e to the 19th and divided by 2 e to the 10th squared equals and we get 3.335 I guess we keep a few extra decimal places 3.335 times 10 to the 8 newtons so that would be the magnitude of the force between mass 1 and mass 3 now we find the force between mass 2 and mass uh, 3 and you know that's going to be a lot smaller because the mass is smaller and the distance is greater. I've already calculated beforehand the distance along the diagonal here which is of course using Pythagorean theorem the square root of R1 squared plus R2 squared. So the force between 1 and 3 is going to be equal to G M oh, not 1 and 3 now we're between 2 and 3 so that would be mass 2 mass 3 divided by the distance between them so it would be this quantity r3 squared r3 squared which is equal to again leaving off the units to get a cleaner equation so m2 is 1 times 10 to the 20th that's 1 times 10 to the 19th and then divided by that distance squared, that would be 5. 5 times 10 to the, hmm, i got to be careful. Now, uh, let me just write it like this. I'll write it 2.236 times 10 to the 10th quantity squared. And what do we get when we do that? So 6.67 e to the 11 minus times 1 e to the 20th times 1 e to the 19th, that would be divided by 5 e to the 20th, and we get 1.334. Right, so 1.334 times 10 to the 8 newtons. So that would be the magnitude of the force between M2 and M3. Now, to find the components, we're going to need the angle, the angle theta. So we can use the arctangent. Theta equals the arctangent of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, the ratio would be 1 to 2. So 0.5, take the arctangent, we get 26.56 or 26.57 degrees. Okay, now that we have the angle, we can find the x and the y components, because what we can say here is that the x component of this, F23, in the x direction is equal to f23 times the cosine of theta which is equal to here we have 1.334 times 10 to the 8 newtons times the cosine of 26.57 degrees so 
So take the cosine of that and multiply that times 1.334. And we get, hmm, we get 1.19. 1 1.19 times 10 to the 8 newtons. So that would be the x component of that force. And now we find the y component of the force. So F 2, 3, y is equal to, and again, those are magnitudes, even though it's pointing in a negative direction, we're still only finding the magnitude. So we have F 2, 3 times the sine of theta, which is equal to 1.334 times 10 to the 8 newtons. Multiply times the sine of that angle, 26.57 degrees. And what do we get now? Let's see here. 26.57, take the sine of that, times 1.334 equals 0 0.59. Let's just write a 0 0.60. All right. 0 0.60 times 10 to the 8 newtons. So that would be the y component that's pointing upward. Now we're ready to add the components together. So what we can say is that the force total is going to be equal to the vector sum of F13 plus F23. And now let's see what the components are. For F13, notice there's only one component in the x direction. It's pointing to the left. So there we get the following. We get minus 3.335, and let's just write it as minus 3.3. We'll just round it off to one decimal place. Minus 3.3 times 10 to the 8 newtons in the x direction. So this here is F13, and then we add to that plus F23. Now notice we have a negative component in the x direction and a positive component in the y direction. So in the negative direction, we can write negative 1.2, we'll just round it off to one decimal place, times 10 to the 8 newtons in the x direction, negative direction, and then plus 0 0.6 times 10 to the 8 newtons in the y direction. And so this is our second vector, the force between M3 and M2. And now we simply have that have to add that together, so the total force is going to be equal to this, and this added together gives you a minus 4.5 times 10 to the 8 newtons in the x direction, plus 0 0.6 times 10 to the 8 newtons in the y direction. And that's how we write that vectorially. Now we're not quite done yet because maybe you want to know the magnitude of that force. So to find the magnitude, we use Pythagorean theorem. We can say that the total force is equal to the square root of the F component of the X component square plus the Y component square of the total. So this becomes equal to when we take this squared plus this squared. So this would be 4.5 squared plus 0.6 squared equals, take the square root, that becomes 4.54. Well, I'll just go ahead and use one more decimal place. So that becomes 4.54 times 10 to the 8 newtons. Notice that the y component is just so small compared to the x component, it doesn't make a lot of difference in the total. And then finally, if you then imagine that the total force is probably something like this, this would be F total, and then if we want to find this angle right here, let's call that angle phi. We can then say that phi relative to the negative x, negative x axis is equal to the arc tangent of the opposite side. The opposite side would be the y component divided by the adjacent side, which would be the x component. So I'm going to take the arc tangent of that we get 7.6 degrees. So that's the angle relative to the ne negative x-axis, which is the direction of the total force or the vector force on M3 due to the presence of M2 and M1. And that's how it's done.